a staggering 80 to 90% of Amazon businesses fail within the first few years. Now, there's a growing concern within the Amazon FBA community, having built a community of thousands of sellers myself, that people are starting to fail left, right, and center, sometimes before even getting started. But instead of flooding you with even more overload of information and rehashing what all these other gurus are already telling you, I'm gonna zero in on the one crucial piece of information that you need to succeed in this cutthroat Amazon market today. Now the question poses, why are Amazon FBA businesses failing? Amazon itself is definitely not failing. I think it's safe to say that every single person on this planet knows that. Amazon transparently is more saturated than ever. Everyone, including myself and their grandmas are trying to hit gold with their next big product. Now with this intense competition on Amazon, many sellers are offering very similar product offerings and transparently, they're just generic copycats with one goal in mind, to vie for attention on Amazon. Just want attention. Now, the worst part about this is most of them, if not all of them, are simply just blending in, leading to a lack of customer interest in that specific niche. So you need to ask yourself this one simple question. If your product looked exactly like every other competitor's product on Amazon, why would they choose your listing over theirs? And here is where most sellers are going wrong. What they think is in order to compete, they need to lower their prices. But trust me when I say this, I've done this time and time again and I've learned from my mistakes. Competing on price is the fastest way to lose all of the profit that you built up on the front end of building your brand and your product. So if you want your product, your brand, and your business in general to actually make money, but more importantly, to stand out in this cutthroat Amazon market, product development or differentiation, if you want to call it, is the key to success. It's actually quite simple. And transparently, if you're listening to this and you're one of those copycats, I'm gonna tell you that it's actually pretty easy to fix as well. In order to develop your product, start by researching the market. This is gonna allow you to identify gaps, common problems, additional needs, and weaknesses that people are facing in the existing products in the market. Your goal here is to solve unsolved problems or to find common problems that people need solved in order to purchase that product in the first place. Best case, you're doing both. Something that hasn't been done and you're still fixing the issues that are currently happening in the marketplace, even if there are competitors already doing it. Now, one of the simple guru ways out there in order to do this is to simply just look at all of the reviews at some of your top competitors. Look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. What you're gonna be able to understand is things to continue doing and things to not do at all. Now, this is gonna sound weird, but sometimes you need to just have an honest conversation with yourself when you're doing all of this market research. Ask yourself simple questions like, what are people complaining about? Are parts always breaking? Is it hard to assemble this product? Do I need to maybe change the material in order to solve a problem? Just ask yourself questions. Jot down all of the misinformation that is on your current competitor's listings and come up with solutions that is gonna make your product better and to solve those needs. Now, when I talked about how it's quite easy to fix and or easy to actually implement if you're doing this for your first time, trust me, there's gonna be this one tool that you're gonna use that's gonna automate this entire manual process that all of the gurus used to teach you. It's called Data Dive. Data Dive is a simple subscription that quite literally will take all of your competitors, do a full analysis on those competitors and tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm not even kidding you guys. It will literally tell you exactly how you need to improve the product in order to stand out. Now, I'm personally a partner of Data Dive, and trust me, I've implemented this within all of my programs. All of my students use it. It is an absolute game-changing tool. And to make this even simpler for you, I have a discount code of 20%. I'm gonna leave it in the bio and the description for you to click on. Check it out, start with the free trial, and go from there. Now, when you're using AI or you're doing this manually, whatever approach that you take in order to develop your product, the most important thing to understand is is that development point actually needed in the market? And that's why utilizing this qualitative data, is actually gonna give you factual facts on exactly what you need to change. But you need to ask yourself, is it worth actually making that change? Is the customer actually gonna see the value? And more importantly, is it going to lead to a profitable product or not? Now, here's an example. This is a brand that, first of all, we launched completely publicly. You have access to the entire case study by going to ecombv.com. This product takes the exact approach that I'm talking about today. We utilize Data Dive to come to conclusions on how we can make the product better. And the first question that we asked ourselves, okay, with this portable travel shelf, it's essentially packing cubes, okay? It's an ultimate alternative. Now with this, we asked, what is a natural product that we can actually include in this, embedded in there so it's a nice seamless user experience so that we can stand out amongst our competition? 
and we came to the conclusion of including a jewelry organizer as well as a cosmetic bags organizer that is completely detachable for all of your TSA approved toiletries. This one simple development amongst changing the quality, making sure that the user experience is good, allowed us to not only launch the product at a higher price compared to our competitors. The average market price was about $30. We launched at 40. We are now selling this for $50. And what this has allowed us to do is add additional things on our new order because we added $10 in margin. Understanding all of the things that you can do to your product and strategically placing them out over your orders to make sure that you're always on your toes, to keep aces in your back pocket to implement so that you can stand out not only on your first order, but on your second order, third order, because like we said earlier, you're going to have copycat. You're going to have people coming to market, taking your exact idea, and you need to be on your toes in order to compete. There's this one saying that I live and breathe by. We're not just selling a product. We're selling to a customer. Oh, what? The customer's always right. And with that, you need to have a strong brand identity in order to resonate with that customer. And the biggest thing that you need to keep in mind when you're building this identity is how you can establish trust with them. I want you to take a moment to think about the brands that you trust, whether it be Apple, Disney, to name a few. They're most likely consistent, they're reliable, and they also probably have a very unique story that allows you to resonate with them. Think of those big brands and create a vision to allow your customer to feel that same trust that you feel in those big brands. Now, when you have the vision, it's about taking that vision and bringing it into your actual product, all of your assets, the way that you communicate on social media. This includes, like I said, your actual product itself, the packaging, all of the colors that you use, the content that you create, the messaging that you sent out on whatever social platform that your customer is sitting on. This consistency will help your customer remember and recognize you. When, as I said before, there are so many sellers to choose from on Amazon, on any product that you sell. The other most important thing that you always need to be doing is making sure that you're looking at your reviews, making sure that you're looking at all of your customer inquiries, the positive, the negative, the good, the bad, the ugly. Take that feedback and reiterate every single time that you have an opportunity to do so. Because trust me when I say this, you launching your own product is going to have a bias decision, even if you try to take the bias out. But who won't have a bias decision is the person actually using your product. And if you can take that feedback and make it better for them, what is that going to do? It's going to build trust with them. It's going to build a better experience for all the customers who purchase from you moving forward. So if you want to differentiate yourself and stand out amongst the sea of competition, what you want to do is you want to focus on creating valuable products that solve real world problems, as well as making sure that they're unique so that they have additional value for that customer to purchase yours amongst all the other people. Take it a step further. Build a brand that resonates with people so that you can establish trust early on, and hopefully they can be a lifetime long customer. This is how you behind this computer screen right now is going to succeed on Amazon and be a part of that 10 to 20% that is currently succeeding on Amazon. So if you found this valuable, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all of the content that we have coming out on a bi-weekly basis.